Thank you, Dee, for coming along today to raise your voice for children. South African-born Dee McLaughlin is a film director, a journalist, and a humanitarian. She has made eight feature films, probably most known for her sex trafficking thriller, The Jams, which won multiple awards. She has worked and lived in many parts of the globe, from Africa, the Americas, the UK, and now Australia. She founded the news site gumshoenews.com in 2013 and has been actively involved in combating corruption in the child protection and state abduction by government. Dee has worked tirelessly for the last three years and more, uncovering the corruption in the family court and the children's courts in Victoria and South Australia. She has seen firsthand how pedophilia is normalised through the legal system and is an avid campaigner for better outcomes of children. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, thank you. So, um, as Gabby said, I'm, I made a film in 2007 uh, called The Jammed About. It was inspired by actual events on sex trafficking in Melbourne. And um, so when I started interviewing uh, Rachel Vaughan um, in 2018 um, and, and her horrific story, uh, she said, you know, you've got to meet this mum because you've just got to meet this mum. So I met this mum and that put me on a journey into family court, children's court and the actions of government. And so originally I thought, look, there's, there's been a mistake here. It's a, it's a mistake. And then I started thinking, um, actually the system, the child protection system, the family court system is just broken. It's broken. That's what a lot of advocates say, it's broken. And um, after I had spent two years trying to get meetings with and writing to, uh, you know, let, let me just look at my notes here, ministers, attorney generals, the ombudsman, APRA, all commissioners of corruption, the judicial commissioners, um, you know, various, almost everyone, police commissioners, everyone, everyone, there was a big wall. And then I realized that actually the system's not broken. It is a well, oiled system for removing children. It's not broken at all. It is working in the most malicious and the most disgusting way. And so when I realized that, you know, and when you realize this, you realize that, you know, for example, that what they're 45,000 kids um, under um, under under 18 in out of home care and the government is a dangerous parent 70 percent 77 percent of the of runaway kids are from less than one percent so i mean it, it's just it's just incredible and then if you you know and then in trying to present your case in, uh, with these protective parents trying to present their case in court they can cite the esteemed researchers, Palmer and Milne, who did a, a, a study for the um, Guardian in New South Wales. And, and they did extensive research, and they well thought after. And they discovered that Australia is number one. Australia is having the highest reported rate of child abuse of girls internationally, 21%. This is a study. A scientific study. We are number one in the world. I mean, this is incomprehensible. And then you go to court and they go, what do you mean the child was abused? And, um, and then false reporting. One to 1.5% of, uh, uh, of children falsely report. And they mostly report falsely to a third party. And then when you land up in court, the child's disbelieved, 95% of the time. It's incomprehensible. So when I first started, I, I published an article. Can you still hear me? Okay, I'll talk louder. So when I, uh, when I 
first started, I did a survey in um, on Gumshoe News. Um, I, I did a survey on Gumshoe News about um, uh, cases that had sexual abuse in the family court. And uh, question seven asked, who believed your child? Who who believed your child? And of the 71 people that answered, only two of the judges did, and only two of the independent lawyers did. And it's gobsmacking. When, um, you know, what did the PM say? Sorry, we've got to believe our kids. We apologize. It is absolutely meaningless. It, it's such a false echo. And then, which of these people, and it's a big long list here, which of these people disregarded evidence of abuse? The judge. 58 out of 67 court cases disregarded evidence of abuse. Independent child lawyers, 52. And, you know, we often say, serial killers will get better representation than children in court. It is absolutely disgraceful. And the laws are all ignored. Um, you know, High Court, um, uh, High Justice Gleason's thing saying that, uh, you know, habeas corpus, you must listen to the child. And, you know, it's a High Court decision. It's completely ignored. The, hum the Charter Rights of the Child, Article 12, is completely ignored. They do not care about the, about the children. Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up now. Emotional abuse is 45% of child removals. And emotional abuse has no, has no factor, has no basis. There's nothing to gauge emotional abuse. And it is just um, based on, oh, the mum's got, the protected mum's got a delusional disorder. And so when you present it in court, and there's the protective parent saying there's there's all this, this information, years of disclosures, years of it, where the child disclosed for hours. And the whole court is oblivious to this. They're not really, I think they all know. They're not oblivious. And you've got them saying, no, you just got a delusional disorder. A delusional disorder is a fixated belief that is not amenable to reason. So it leaves the court, the independent lawyers, the Crown barristers, and all these people in these courts, and the judges, with the problem. Because they are not amenable to reason. So they have two options. They either suffer from a mental health condition, or they're either instructed to break the law. Thanks a lot. Amazing. Thank you so much, G. That was incredible to hear about your work. Thank you so much for being a voice today for children.